Today we're going to take a look at the Saucony Tempest. Uh, it releases the end of June, $160. Saucony was kind enough to send us multiple pairs, so I'm going to give you my thoughts about the uh, shoe, uh, the details, and then we're going to have five of our team members, RTR team members, give you their initial impressions after a few runs. Hello everybody, Sam from Road Trail Run here in beautiful Park City. We had snow, but now the weather is back to spring. So we're going to talk today a bit about the Saucony Tempest. It's a brand new shoe from Saucony coming at the end of June, $160. So it is a light stability trainer. And by light, what do I mean? Well, it comes in in my 8.5 US, 8.78 ounces, 249 grams. So that's pretty darn light. And it has a very big stack height of 30, uh, 36 and a half at the heel and 28 and a half at the forefoot. How do they get it so light for a stability trainer? Well, you see the heel here, we have Power Run PB. In fact, which is a, a, a PEBA expanded bead foam like you find in Endorphin Speed and uh, Pro and even as an insert here in the uh, Exodus Ultra. Um, you'll see the heel area on the lateral side has an extended uh, section of the softer PB. And then on the medial side, because we're in a support shoe, it is much shorter. The rest of the midsole is a guidance frame of Power Run, and it's fairly firm Power Run. Uh, I would say it is a bit firmer than what you find in the Ride 15 All Power Run midsole, uh, and similar in firmness to what I'm finding in the Exodus Ultra. So that frame, uh, with your foot sitting well down in the shoe, is designed to stabilize you. And you can see the big difference between the medial side here with the vertical walls, shorter Power Run PB, versus uh, the, the lateral side where it's, it's the geometry allows you to roll forward, whereas on the medial side, you're looking for some support. Now, there are no posts, plastic pieces, as in the Guide 15, which is all, uh, power, um, all, all regular power run that has sort of an arc, and I'm going to compare those uh, a little later after I, uh, after I take my first run. Now, the upper is an engineered mesh upper. Uh, it's quite, I've tried them on, very supportive. True to size, you notice a very nice high toe box here with some stiffener to keep it kind of off the toes. We have nice ventilation. Uh, you'll see uh, we have a strap here. It's not the A strap that we have in the uh, guide in the ride. It's tied into a webbing and goes down and you'll see it on both both sides. So that's the lock you lock in. After I tried them on, I noticed really very good arch support, very good medial support all around here. Um, now, uh, the profile really of the midsole is quite flat on the ground, as you can see here. That's the stability element, medial side, whereas we have sort of more of a, a flowing uh, approach on the lateral side with a softer cushioning allowing you to, to land. So it is a stability shoe, and I typically don't uh, run stability shoes, but we've had some surprises recently in the category. For example, the uh, Horizon 6 from Mizuno, much, much, much heavier shoe, uh, flowed along real smoothly, and it too used different densities of foam to achieve stability with a, um, with a smooth ride. Now, underfoot, we have a, uh, the outsole, all the red elements are the same firmness. This is a firmer rubber up front, uh, same as the heel. It's not a soft or blown rubber, all the red. However, it feels like the uh, black in the center here is a little bit softer. You can see uh, the Power Run PB um, super critical beaded foam running all the way through um, all the way the, through the center of the shoe um, with the frame reaching up underneath here. We also have a kind of unusual, but I think I understand why, a piece of um, outsole in here. And I think that's because we have the softer um, Power Run PB on this side, whereas on this side, we have the somewhat firmer 
power run. So this, this provides the stability through here. And here they added this, it looks like, just to kind of uh, make up for the softness of the power run uh, PB. And you can see it's a moderately soft uh, uh, foam. It has a lot of rebound in the, um, in the Exodus uh, Ultra here. It's really fine through the center of the shoe. And that shoe is also quite stable. Its power run on the outside is the same, I think, firmness as what we have here. So we have a whole bunch of us testing the shoe. I'm gonna give you everybody's kind of first impressions as well as mine after a run. We're gonna have a full multi-tester review. So uh, stay tuned. Let's take them out for a nice run. Okay, a lot of sun everywhere, finally after all the snow. So I am at my usual eight and a half. Uh, true to size fit both feet, including my narrower one. The wider one over here on the left, also nice and secure lace up. I've just laced them once, first time, and done. Very, very good secure midfoot that ties in with the support down below in the midsole. Toe box, oh, what a nice toe box. Not super wide, but those overlays and the height really kind of keep everything secure, but kind of no pressure over the toes. Heel counter, not highly, highly padded, but very, very secure. The highness of it, I think, helps me here. Uh, just really, a, I would call it a, a performance-oriented upper. This isn't a plush upper but it, it's plenty, plenty comfortable and roomy. Maybe a bit dense. Uh, it's not super warm today, but I, I think it's at least adequately breathable, but probably not super breathable because your non-stretch mesh really kind of needs to be there for the support given how lightweight the mesh is. Give you my comments at the end of the review, but here are the team's thoughts. First up for some initial comments, Renee in Nebraska. She's a 130 half runner, a 326 marathoner, and runs a lot on gravel uh, type roads. So Renee says it's a firmer midsole than the Shift 2 and more forgiving than Axon 2. Of course, no speed roll, but the traditional ride is better for me on gravel than either Axon 2 or Shift 2. The weight and stack are awesome and initially would pick this over the shift or the axon. Too soon to know how I feel about the stability features. Ryan Eiler is in Massachusetts. He is a 227 marathoner and can regularly run under 15 minutes for a 5K. Here's what Ryan has to say. He agrees with Renee. Weight and stack ratio is great. Love the cushion throughout. Lots of distinct power run rubbery rebound. Not something I've experienced much in this category. And hybrid midsole blend makes for a somewhat unique ride. Noticeably lacking road feel, which accentuated the feeling of stability. Felt most bolstered, supported in the medial forefoot. Little flat transitioning up onto the toe, but that sensation, whether physical or psychological, decreased after a few miles. It affected my forefoot pronation slightly. With, we'll take a few more runs for me to totally figure this one out. Michael Ellenberger in Chicago has a half PR of 67.43, marathon 223. So Michael says um, only one grain, one run so far. So a big grain of salt. It's definitely a true stability shoe. I can tell that my gait and foot strike are slightly different. Upper is nice, but slightly thick. I'd compare to endorphin shift without the speed roll. Michael and Sally, who's coming up, both noticed some bleeding of the black color from the laces or maybe the tongue uh, getting uh, onto the upper and uh, through to their socks. So we'll be keeping a close eye on that. Both of them were running in humid conditions. Sally with a 326 marathon PR and uh, also podium second place at the New York City Marathon in 2019 and 2021 in her women's 60 category says about our shoe as a neutral runner who prefers neutral shoes i really noticed the medial support but got used to it after three runs it feels more natural to me perhaps somewhat needing a break-in period the platform is very wide and the fit quite roomy and wide in the toe box so it would be awesome for high volume feet I had to work with the lacing to get it right and needed the extra lacing hole to secure my heel on the uphills and to use some of, uh, of the too long for me laces. The bounce is fun naturally. It's power run PB after all and the endorphin speed two is one of my favorite shoes for this PB fun factor. I agree with Sam that despite the traditional geometry, 
Your stride benefits from a forward roll because of the toes sinking in the lower PB foam. Great weight and stack, no hot spot at all after three runs. Thumbs up, especially for those looking for a bouncier light stability shoe. Adam Gluick, who is an engineering student and uh, nationally ranked in recent years Nordic skier, who can run uh, well under 17 minutes for a 5K, says, I'm a neutral runner, but found the Tempest extremely enjoyable. It has a lot of bounce and response of an endorphin speed, but with a reassuring sense of stability without strict guidance. It's an easy to shoe to run fast in and surprisingly light for its amount of cushion. So a bit of Park City scenery before I give you my conclusions. It was absolutely grand out there uh, with beautiful, cool weather. Great weather to run the Tempest okay, in. here are my initial thoughts after two nice runs up here in Park City with some hills, all pavement, a little bit of uh, road base as you saw in the little video earlier. Now let's talk about the ride here. Well, at first they were kind of slappy and I definitely noticed the midfoot sidewalls here there are no posts per se this is just power run very similar to what's in the ride 15 and the guide 15 just regular power run but they were a bit stiff and i could really feel the arch here but after six or seven miles and i'll show you we started getting some flex so what that made me do is flow smoother to the front uh, and actually they are more flexible on the lateral side because of the power run pb than on the medial side so i'm i'm landing i'm landing and i'm rolling through the soft power run pb so there are really three elements to the ride here that make it really pleasing first on the lateral side you have the power run pb so i did some hills that really softens the landing not mushy soft but gives it a lot of nice kind of rebound. And then the second big element is yes, you do feel some support from the sidewall. It's just the power run. Um, and it kind of reminds me of the older Kinvara, not the last two, um, the uh, 12 and the 13, but earlier ones where you had the same kind of geometry for support. Here you have more stack though. So you feel a bit more support than you did in those older Kinvara, but it's sort of the same principle. Finally, what you really notice is the big layer of Power Run uh, PB, the PBA, PBA foam in the front, which allows your foot to kind of sink in and roll the toe off. This is not the full speed roll of, say, the endorphin shift or the endorphin speed, but there is a touch, touch of that kind of speed roll kick going on here. Uh, the power run frame, which you see here, right, running through, and of course on the medial side, well, from what I can tell, it's basically a, a sidewall here, uh, and then it gets wider, and then it's in two strips through here, all the rest through the center is, is the power run PB. So it's essentially a guidance frame that directs your foot in the direction of travel down into that soft power run PB. So you have a real kind of directed um, linear flow to this shoe with that midfoot support, giving you a little bit, you know, a little bit of a, uh, well, more than a little bit, it's not a neutral shoe of support at midfoot. Then you roll down in and sink, if you will, a bit. And there's a lot of bounce off the front, moderated by the layer of power run, regular power run before. So it's not a plate, but there is quite a bit of response here. This is a highly, highly cushioned shoe. Um, uh, it's not a max max 15. I think I, I'm a neutral runner, but I had no issues with it whatsoever. Um, but it is more noticed than here, especially after I got about 10 miles and it broke in. So what is this wonderful new shoe coming the end of June? The Tempest good for well i would say it's a very very solid and exciting daily trainer for just about everybody uh if you really really can't stand the medial support um maybe it isn't for you but it is very mild in support and kind of useful if you're piling on the miles um it only weighs uh nine uh, about nine ounces 9.03 ounces 
266 grams in a U.S. 9. So that's really reasonable in weight for this big stack. In terms of the upper, most of the ventilation is going to come through the slots here. Uh, it's a fairly dense but very thin upper. Uh, I was running in the mid 60s Fahrenheit. Uh, they didn't feel warm, a little warmer through the midfoot with our really nice gusset tongue, but you're really well held here for all kinds of serious running. I think maybe, maybe uh, where they won't be uh, totally ideal is for kind of speed work, track workouts, but for tempo, uh, for long runs, daily training, if you want that kind of guided but not obtrusive support, it's a great choice and it's really just a wonderful blending of different foams and geometry here no plates um, a very solid outsole uh, that that plays along well um, that really delivers a all-around daily trainer with a touch of support that should be good for all runner types both neutral and those needing that kind of stability element. Really, really well executed new shoe that should prove to be a real big favorite of 2022. Thank you very much for watching our initial impressions review. Our full multi-tester review with a multitude of RTR team members will be posting to our website roadtrailrun.com real soon. Thank you very much for watching and have a great run.